Howdy, Mike McCoy here. Today I'm going to tell a little story about a Christmas that almost wasn't. It was 1993. In the spring of 93, we had a terrible snowstorm here. They call it the blizzard of 93. And it put our sawmill shed right down on top of the mill. And uh, that hit us pretty hard, but we dug uh, dug everything out. And it didn't hurt the mill bad at all. I think it broke one little piece. And uh, I built me a new shed and got everything up and going. And that summer was a pretty good year for us. We we made a, we, we sawed quite a bit. And up in the fall, late fall there, the neighbor up the road here, his barn fell and the insurance is going to pay for it. I think a tree fell on it. And he contracted me to cut him out a barn pattern. And, and for us, it was a it was a big order. It was up in the thousands of dollars. I can't remember how many thousand it was, but to us, it was a big order. Well, we started sawing on that and all the extra money we had, or basically all the money we had, I used it to buy logs with to cut this order out. For it is 10, 20,000 foot order. And everything is going good. Uh, the deal was he paid me when I got done with the job. And every day I'd cut a load of lumber and just take it up there and dump it for every two days or whatever, you know. And we was right down next to the end, and it was just a few days before Christmas. Well, we was assigned with old UD-18 International. It started on gas and switched over to diesel. And it had been giving trouble. It had dropped a valve or two in the past, and it was getting a little water in the oil. But as far as operating, it was assigned just fine. Well, we went down there this morning, that morning, and I think we, I want to say we like 236 feet of having the order done, finished. You know, in saw milling, that ain't nothing. Well, I fart that thing up and rolled a log up on the carry Jerry's old handset mill to the time. And uh, started sawing, and I might have cut a slab, maybe a board off of it or something. No, I hadn't cut much at all. And, and the old Perry and it sounded like it was in a bind, like it's like he's a pulling hard. And uh, this I come back with a carriage, that thing blowed up. It knocked a hole out of the side of that motor about the size of a dinner plate. And when it did, evidently that was the rod that was uh, binding up. It took off running just wide open and caught on fire. They was blades coming down. They looked like one of them dragster motors you see uh, burning out. And the day before that, we'd had our oil barrel filled up right beside it. And uh, that thing, the blaze was licking the top of that new shed. I like to freak out. And as luck have it, I had a water hose there if we'd wash them logs at the end of the carriage a lot of time. And I just grabbed that water hose, started squirting down in there where that fire was coming out of and finally got the far out and went over there and cut the motor off. And I told Mary Ruth, I said, boy, we're screwed now for sure. Right here at Christmas time. And we'd done bought Chad's Christmas, but we hadn't bought my daughter Shannon's. And, you know, I, that just wouldn't work at all. So me and her gathered up what gifts we'd bought with each other, and we took them back and got our money back, and we bought Shannon some Christmas for it didn't even dawn on me to go see if I could borrow any money. And I mean, it was close to Christmas. I, I didn't know nobody to ask her. And you couldn't have went to a bike or nothing. So, well, her Christmas was fairly secure, but there we sat with a broke meal and a few thousand dollars owed to us, but we couldn't get it till we delivered that other. And I could have went to one of the neighboring sawmills and bought it, but I just wasn't thinking right. The only thing, I was focused on getting my meal fixed. That was the only thought pattern I had at that time. Well, I had this old 57 GMC single axle road tractor. They called it a bubble nose. And when I bought it, I bought it with the intention of maybe fixing it up for, you know, old antique trucks like that sell pretty good. And the truck was complete. I think the only thing missing on it was one or two injectors. 
and a friend of mine had some injectors and he gave me some injectors to go in and they were rusted up they wouldn't even work and I sprayed them a bolt buster and pecked them a little bit and got them to work well and there was another boy that was wanting to buy that old truck and I called him when we come up here to the house after the mill blowing up and I told him I said if you want that truck I said I'll take three thousand dollars for it and you can come and get it he said, well, I'd like to have it, but I'll have to see if I can get the money together. I said, well, if you ain't here by 12 o'clock tomorrow, I know you ain't going to buy it, and I'm going to just, I'm going to junk it out and put that motor in my mill. And we went down there and started taking the old motor out. And uh, I pulled the old motor out, and I left the frame it was a setting in, the clutch assembly, and... Uh, no, I took the clutch assembly and the flywheel all out. This, this, that shaft where the pulleys go that runs belts to the mill, I left it there. Well, I come up here at 12 o'clock, the end call. I took a torch and I cut the cow mounts off that thing. I just run the forks through the windshield. That old truck just picked the cow up and set it over to the side. And we pulled the truck down there to the sawmill. Well, I got it lined up to where it back in there, and I cut the rear ends out from under it and left the frame. And there was a boss on that shaft that when you took a U-joint off that uh, drive shaft, little drive shaft one that one, that boss fit right on that. So I backed that in there and cut me some legs and, and leveled it and run that drive line into that boss and just welded it around there. And left the transmission and, and the motor and the front wheels and the frame on that truck just like it come. And I took the torch and I cut the steering wheel off and pedals and all that stuff. I, I just stripped it down to the bare frame and the front steering axle and changed oil in it and put them injectors in it and never hooked fuel lines up. The next day we started it. Well, that thing, it lit off surprisingly well. And uh, it had a terrible knock to it. I, ain't, I don't believe I ever heard a motor knock any harder than that than did. And I told Mary Ruth, I said, I believe that thing got a rod knocking in, but we'll run it a minute and see. And we probably run it 30 minutes. It just all of a sudden just puked a gallon of oil. Well, it wasn't a gallon, but it looked like a gallon just out on the ground. It bleh. I cut it out. And I called this old boy I knowed. And uh, he, he was a real good Detroit man. He had worked on them for years. And I told him what was going on. I said, that thing's knocking terrible, and it, it puked like a gallon of oil out of it. I believe the motor's bad. He said, well, how long did you run it? I said, probably 20 to 30 minutes. He said, well, you, it, it ain't a rod bearing or a main bearing. He said, if it hadn't been, it'd blowed up in that time. He said, it wouldn't run that long. Uh, he said, it sounds to me like your rack needs adjusted. And said, as far as that oil, you probably just had it over full. So he, he loaned me a book and gave me a little tool to adjust the injectors and the rack all with. And I followed that book day, just like I said, and the rack was out bad. Some of the little fingers was just flopping. And I got it set where it was supposed to be. And uh, put the valve cover on and everything, started it back up. And it wanted to knock and it was running smooth. And put it in gear, started sawing. And when the motor started getting warm, about about the time for the thermostat to open. A was steam started coming out of that. I mean, it filled sawmill shit. There's so much steam come out them vent tubes. A Detroit's got vent tubes that cleans the oil and stuff out of the air box. And uh, I'm pretty sure I finished our order out so we'd get paid. I know I did. And uh, I told Mary Ruth, I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run it till it blows. I said, we've got the order now, and if it blows up, I will get a motor, but I'm gonna see what this will do. 
And it carried on for probably 10 minutes, just steaming it. And it started getting better and better. And finally, all that steam just quit. And it started running. And, I mean, it it never it never was running bad. It, and uh, we started sawing with it. And then a day or two after that, it started getting warm. Not hot, but warm. Hotter than it should have been. And I sweated the top of the radiator loose, and it was just like mud on top of that radiator. And I cleaned all that off and made me a thing, and I cleaned all them little holes out, you know, rotted it out. And put it back together and sweated that back up on there, and that old motor set right there and made, I went down if it didn't make a million feet of lumber. It, it sat there and run just perfect. I mean, it, it never did give no trouble. Seemed like I had to put a blower on it one time. And then that motor wore out, and uh, I traded around about another and then put it in there, and it was on there when I sold the meal. And I sold it to a boy, and he put it in his truck. And everybody said, oh, you can't use one of them motors like that. Said, the governor ain't right on. Said, you've got to have a hydraulic governor. Said, it won't hold the speed right for the song. That thing, just to be honest with you, it sounds just as good as, one, as the power unit I've got. No matter, I wasn't throwing nickel up between them. But that was Christmas and almost one. I just knowed we was in trouble there. But we got everything fixed. It all worked out good. So I guess that was, that was probably one of the best Christmases we ever had. Talk at you later.